who are have been homeless. What was the first night without a home like? And how did you adapt to your new situation? Story 1. I was about 9 years old, and my mom said we were going on a camping trip. I didn't really suspect anything, as it was summertime and we went camping a lot when I was younger. Although I did wonder why we were packing so much stuff. After a few weeks of camping, I started to complain. But my mom kept insisting that it was good for us to get in touch with nature, etc. Then school started, and we were still camping. And we kept camping for another six months. When we finally got a house, my mom cried with joy. And we don't camp anymore. Story 2. I was 13 when my parents kicked me out and told me they no longer wanted anything to do with me. I was terrified to visit a shelter because I'd known some foster, and the whole system scared me, plus I wanted to continue going to the same school. And didn't want to lose my friends, too. The scariest part at that age was really finding out what I was hoping to eat. There had been a dilapidated trailer just minutes down the road from my dad's place, so I stayed in that. I don't think it all really hit me until I had to choose one night between food and blankets because the temperature was expected to drop down to the mid-30s, and I had only had one somewhat thin blanket at that point. The next day, I put on my best attire, which was nothing impressive, and asked for a job at Long John Silver's. I lied and told them I was 15 and I worked five days a week rushing over after school. I ate more unhealthy than I have since to save money for some form of shelter, which came in the form of a 91 Toyota Camry that I purchased out of the thrifty nickel for $300. I loved that clunker, plus heating myself was much easier. From there, it was mostly uphill. Found an older lady willing to rent me her garage without any sort of credit check. Took a couch off the side of the road to sleep on. I even had internet in there where I mostly read scary stories all night. I wish video streaming services were really a thing back then. And I just kind of learned to roll with the punches. My hood wasn't normal. It was downright terrifying a good chunk of the time. But it is what made me who I am today. Story 3. I was homeless for a couple of months a year or two ago. I had a car and a low-paying job, so I lived in the woods in a tent for a bit. The first night was miserable. I ended up sleeping really uncomfortably in the passenger seat of my car, and it was a really cold night. After that, I got a tent and slept on an old climbing pad I had. The first night was hell, but the next several weeks were actually not so bad. I had a spot in the woods where I was well hidden and would cook over a fire. I really didn't have it that bad, but it gave me quite a bit of sympathy for people who really do end up on the streets in a much more desperate situation. Cow is not easy. Story 4. I was only homeless for about 6 weeks, at 36 years of age. After several years of depression and anxiety, slowly eroding my resources, relationships, and general will to try anymore, I ended up having a final blowout with my GF, who reasonably couldn't handle me anymore. I started sleeping at work, which wasn't even a full-time job. The delicacy involved in not getting caught, and the freedom from the extremely unhealthy state my relationship had been in, kept my mind away from the absolute abject terror that was hiding beneath the surface. The scary part of homelessness for me was the growing sense that if I fell any further, I'd probably never get back up. It takes resources to be clean, fed, and rested. And if you aren't those things, it's very hard to get resources, let alone find the will to try. But that first night was all triage, all focused on being sure the second night wasn't going to be on the street. I pulled it off for six weeks, and that time actually saved my life. I was away from conflict intimately connected to how dire my circumstances had become. Forced into a very regular schedule, routine is asterisk, really asterisk good for me, but nigh impossible in a depressive state. And, without bills, was able to save enough for damage deposit and rent. I still struggle with depression in a pretty serious way, but the animal terror of having nowhere and no one really seared itself into me. A better motivation would be the future I want than the future I fear. But as it stands, I at least have a motivator strong enough to escape the incredible gravity of mental illness. Story 5. Sleeping in my car wasn't that bad. It was summer, so it was pretty warm, which was my biggest issue. Showered in the gym and spent most of my day at the library before going to work. For the first few nights, it wasn't bad. However, one night, police found me sleeping in my car and escorted me to the local homeless shelter, which was one of the most terrifying nights of my life. Since I'm lying there in a top bunk, when a huge argument breaks out because one guy breaks out some meth, wouldn't share it with a second. Then a third got pissed and started screaming at them to be quite because he needed to sleep. Edit. Since this is coming up a lot, people keep asking how it was legal that the police escorted me to the shelter. I don't know the legality of the issue. What I can say is that I was woken up by a knock on my window to see four cops, two cop cars. They were singing those super bright flashlights through my window at me, and I didn't even think of arguing with them. Story 6. When you're a teenager, it seems kind of cool to sleep in the car, on the couch or floor of a friend or acquaintance, or for your dad to scam a rented apartment for a month or two without paying for it. 
Moving around every few months carrying everything that you can in an old Honda Civic seems like an adventure. We once moved a couch across town in it. We must have looked like a couple of idiots. Once after a few months of staying in a place where we had no furniture, we're sleeping on the floor, the carpet of which was so flea infested that you could literally see the fleas hopping around. The landlord got so frustrated with us basically squatting in his property, my dad promised to pay and never did, that he removed the front door. So we went out to scam some food from somewhere and came back to find no front door, which in retrospect is a pretty awesome way to get someone out of your property. One of the ways we scammed food would be to go to the breakfast buffet of a fancy hotel, tell the server that we had a room there, eat a ton of food, and just walk out. This was also kind of fun, but looking back, it is a kind of messed up up way for a dad to treat his teenage. Story 7. First night my wife and I landed up sleeping outside, we slept in a local park that I knew. We had come down from the countryside with a few rands, enough for one meal maybe, and had hoped to stay with a friend. He was unable to give us a place to stay, so we had to sleep outside. After the insecurity of that first night, I told my wife that we have to find a safer place to sleep, so we climbed up the slopes of Table Mountain, about a one-hour walk, and found quite an obscured spot amongst some bushes and trees. We cleared it out of sticks and rocks, made it a bit habitable, and then went make to the city looking for work. We'd spend the day going from one place to the next looking for work until it started growing dark. Then we'd head up the mountain to our little spot for the night. Did that daily for a month until we were able to secure a small shack room in the townships, where we stayed for another few months until I get a job offer. Was my wife's temp waitering jobs that kept us fed whilst I was looking for work. Biggest challenge was mental, keeping focused, clean, looking presentable, and just making my job looking for a job. Story 8. When I was a teenager, I had lots of problems with my mom. I pretty much chose to be homeless. I slept at a Catholic church across from my high school so I could still make it to school and graduate early. I remember feeling really sad because I slept where they put people's ashes, and I remember being so sad that those people could comfort me in death more than anybody alive. I used to talk to them. If there's camera footage, I look insane. I never realized how alone I was in the world until I was homeless. And I never realized how cold concrete can be. It chills you right to your bones and is painful. Story 9. I started being homeless at 19. A previous foster parent put me out for coming home from college one night, and I had called up a friend last minute. When I started to realize I wouldn't be able to crash or stay anywhere, I am fairly certain I started to dread and spiral into a constant, underlying depressive state. All I could think about was, am I going to pass away like this? Do I matter? Will no one help me? I'm sad. I'm scared. I don't want to feel like I have to beg. What if I'm stuck like this? Is this really my life right now? 19. 26 was a very challenging time. Edit. I am stunned, taken aback, and truly appreciate the feedback and support that's been granted to me this day and will continue to respond. But I am not used to so much verbal traffic to peruse. Nevertheless, I will make an AMA upon several Redditor's suggestions, as a lot of this can be encapsulated in so many words. And I want to help by way of sharing. Thank you all again. And I am still doing my very best, better or worse to this day. I simply have no intention on going backwards. Second edit. I have now put an AMA up as per request. I will gladly answer just about anything that anyone wants to know and please. Use my experience to consider helping others. Please and thank you. Story 10. I once was fooled by an ex into moving back in with her after a breakup. After a couple of weeks, she decided to have a yard sale. This yard sale ended up featuring most of my stuff. Then with money in hand, she decided it was time I went back to my place. My place which had nothing in it. My place which I had given notice on. My place which was already awaiting a new renter. I spent my last two weeks sleeping on a hardwood floor using sweaters as blankets. And then when the day came to vacate, I threw all my clothes in a plastic bag and just started walking. I was destitute. I had absolutely nothing and no idea where to start. It was right in the Canadian winter, so staying outside would be a death sentence in many cases. So I did the only thing I could think of. I sat in a 24-hour Tim Hortons. I used what little money I had to purchase small coffees once in a while, so I at least had an excuse to sit there. Eventually, my cash ran out, and I thought for sure I'd get the boot. Then one of the ladies working the counter came over and just handed me my usual order. I guess she probably figured out what was going on and felt bad. The second time she did it, I struggled not to cry. I'm pretty thankful because my next idea if I was asked to leave was to politely refuse, then sit and wait for the cops. Better than freezing to death. Morning came and I had saved only enough to catch a single bus. Headed downtown to try to find some friends. I did and I couch surfed between a lot of them. I never spent a night out in the cold, but I spent many in a coffee shop or bouncing between friends. It was the worst my depression ever got and the closest I ever came to actually ending my life. Things are a million times better for me now, but I'll never forget how worthless I felt. Story 11. 
I was getting high, so it really didn't truly sink in until I was broken dope sick. Then the desperation started. Going to gas stations, jumping car to car, asking for money, stealing what I had to. It was a miserable existence. There are so many things you don't think about when you're not homeless, taking a shower, washing your clothes, and the boredom. Hours upon hours of nothing to do and the constant noise. There was nowhere to go where it was truly quiet. Fortunately, I eventually got arrested for shoplifting, reached out to family who helped me get back on my feet. Story 12. My parents didn't tell us that they lost their house to the bank. One day we left everything but a few clothes and essentials. I remember sitting in the car watching the world outside and I felt extremely alone. The drive just endlessly went unless we had to go to the bathroom. We ate some cracker things and had water at rest stops from bathrooms. Sleeping in a car seat that you couldn't lay back really was hard to adapt to, so I didn't sleep for the first couple nights. It really sucked. But as the days turned into weeks, things just became the new normal. We would drive around for hours and sometimes camp out at campgrounds or roadsides instead of sleeping in our woefully tiny car. This completely ruined our education because we couldn't stay at any school long. I loved school for their food, and I would steal paper, pens, and books sometimes, so I had something to do. My mother eventually said she would just homeschool us, but that was soon dropped for us to do for ourselves. I was able to almost get my GED before a sickness stopped me, but some of my younger siblings only have an education from third or fourth grade. When it was winter, I remember having to take showers from those hand pumps at the campground. The water was so cold, it would instantly burn and numb up anything it touched. We also didn't have winter clothes, so most of us would wrap up in our old blankets and layers of clothes. We rarely had any food, and I resorted to eating some of my clothes, paper, grass, or tiny pieces of my own skin to try to not feel hungry. Once we had to eat pancakes as our main food for months. I cannot eat pancakes anymore because the very smell of them makes me sick now. Other food we got was ramen, and rarely a hot dog. I'm not sure how my parents managed to get the food or have money even if it was very little. Maybe from a food pantry. Cooking food on the fire wasn't that hard to do, and I learned how to make a fire and gather what a fire needs. If we got sick, we never went to a doctor. Just had to hope it got better. We were on and off homeless until I was in my late teens when my grandmother bought my parents a house for us all to live in. It still feels so strange to actually have a home and even food. I still have a hard time knowing a lot of social norms because of the isolation from homelessness. You just do what you can to survive. I still resent my parents for avoiding any help from the government or going to any homeless shelters. They lost our house because of stupid spending and going into bankruptcy. Their habits never changed. We would get a place to live for maybe a year or two, then lose it because my parents were terrible at managing money. Edit. I'm on mobile, so IDK how to edit my post to look pleasing. Sorry for the wall of text. Edit 2. I think I fixed my text wall. Story 13. I packed three bags, one with clothes, blankets, and a pillow. One with food and one with books. I couch surfed for a little bit. A week or two with each of my friends. Slept in my car while I had it. I used other people's kitchens to cook stolen food and ate food that 7, 11 threw away. Every morning at about 6 a.m., night shift would throw out all the food that sat too long. I would wait for the clerk to go back inside and then fish the bag out of the dumpster. Slept outdoors in some parks after the car got towed and I used up my friend's goodwill. Got really good at 5 to 10 minutes wash-ups in public bathrooms with hand soap. Teeth, armpits, underboobs, and butt. Let me tell you how nasty hand soap tasted. Would occasionally wash my underwear with hand soap real quick too and dry it with the hand dryers. I would generally use two 24-hour McDonald's at about 4 a.m. so no one would walk in on me. What I would do is I would panhandle outside of a subway station for enough money for a crack rock, an egg of candy, a needle, and a sandwich and tea. If you wear semi-professional clothes and say, OMG, my purse got stolen, does anyone have any spare change? You get more money than just asking AMD wearing like jeans. I would then go to the first McDonald's, order the sandwich, and say I had to use the bathroom. Then I would do a wash-up, grab the sandwich, and eat it on the way to the next McDonald's. At the second McDonald's, I would order a tea and ask for lemon juice, pocket the juice, and ask to use the restroom. In the restroom, I would use the juice to break down the crack, mix it with the candy, and up. Then sadly, I would usually actually use the bathroom in a park or something. Did this for years until I accidentally got pregnant. I would be goddamned if I screwed my up by being a junkie, so I cold turkeyed everything. I own a house now and will be 14 years clean on November 18th. Edited for clarity and spelling, Story 14. I didn't really realize what was going on. I was about six, seven at the time. Dad said we were going to go for a drive and to pack my backpack with all the clothes I could fit and one toy. Mom was just crying. Me and my brother sat in the back seat. He was a little older and was holding our Sega Genesis and looking scared. We drove for a little while. It was already getting dark. And we parked in front of a Walmart and Dad said he had to rest for a while. Was the first of many, many nights we slept in the car. 
I remember one of my parents was always awake with their hand in their coat pocket. Looking back, it was obvious they had a gun for protection, sleeping in shifts. Edit. Jesus, this blew up and thanks for the gold. Trying to respond to all but my poor inbox. Edit 2. Guys, three gold? Thank you. Story 15. My ex-wife made up a bunch of cow to get a restraining order. I got served at work while she simultaneously shut off my phone service and locked me out of our shared bank account. This was January 7th, 2016. I had a t-shirt and slacks to wear for clothes and nowhere to sleep. My car didn't have working heat. Thank God for my parents who got me a hotel, new phone, and some money for clothes. I ended up living in an extended stay hotel for two months while I looked for an apartment and got my affairs in order. The restraining order was dismissed. The divorce went to trial and I got the house in the story 16. I lived at school until I dropped out due to a bunch of personal reasons piling up. My mom was mad that I dropped out and wouldn't even talk to me the first few days after, and my relationship with my father is complicated, non-existent. I took the train to my hometown, even though I didn't know what I would do or where I would go when I got there. I ended up staying the first night in my brother's room, not quite an apartment, just the one room with a kitchen and bathroom he shares with like five other people. After that, I posted to social media that I was in this unfortunate situation and a friend I had lost touch with despite once being very close offered that I could stay with him and his fiance until I got a place of my own. I never actually had to sleep outside, and I found an apartment after about one month, so all in all, I was pretty lucky with how it turned out. Oh, and my mom and I are cool now. And my dad and I are also trying to rebuild our relationship after he finally divorced his no longer new wife. I've always referred to her as his new wife, even though it's been over a decade. Story 17. I was homeless for a little while in the ADS. It's terrifying at first. You feel so unsafe. I was a teenager and wasn't willing to close my eyes and sleep on a park bench alone. So I went to a local shelter and lied about my age. They forced me to shower and do a pee test. It turns out the women in that shelter were scarier than the streets, so the next night I didn't go back. I slept in a park but ultimately made squatter friends and stayed with them. It was very much a community, and I felt safe and loved their dot. The biggest problem with being homeless in the city is no one wants to let you use the bathroom. Even park bathrooms are locked. Squat peeing in between cars can be done quickly and undercover. But when you get your period, it's a nightmare dot. These days, I have stability, so I never pass a homeless person without buying them some food or giving them a little money. And if they use it for sweets or alcohol, I don't care. Living on the streets is hard. Drink if you need to, my friend. Story 18. I don't recall my very first time exactly. I do remember looking for a friend that was homeless, and his friends ended up watching over me. Everyone was drunk except me. I didn't sleep, more recently. Less than a month ago, I lost my housing and everything I own. I'm alone this time. I sleep during the day and browse Reddit at night. I was homeless for 10 years the first time, and I am terrified now. Story 19. First thing I realized at 18 when leaving home and finding myself stranded straight away is that I wasn't as unlucky as I had always thought. Female, young, and normal looking got support from loads of random people who deemed me very brave. It hit me really hard that if I was fat or a guy, I would have been screwed. I lived in Spain by then, and a couple of nights at a park was quite exciting. Just a couple of nights is what it took to get emergency accommodation, and nobody bothered me. Then jumped from cow job to cow job for a few weeks, ended up getting a year-long apprenticeship selling shoes. Second, I learned that hitchhiking is very cheap and pretty safe in Europe. Just kept clean looks, did loads of workaway placements, and slowly got on my feet. I am 28 now and settling down in Cornwall, UK, which is the nicest place where I could ever imagine living equal sign. Story 20. I feel like I'm too late to the party, but asterisk asterisk, I was actually born homeless dot asterisk asterisk. My mom put newborn me into a small laundry basket filled with blankets she'd been gifted. I spent the first year of my life living out of a car with my family. My mom had my five-year-old brother and four-year-old sister with her, too, all living out of a grand caravan in the early 90s. She'd taken us to Wyoming to hide in the Rocky Mountains, so at least I got to sleep under the stars at night. I've been homeless most of my life. I have stories about it if anyone finds this and is interested. Story 21. I was 18 and had depression. Only had to do the final exams and I would have been good to go. But I panicked and didn't attend, which caused me to fail, of course. Me failing made my depression even worse. My parents couldn't take it anymore. Packed my clothes in a case and set me on the street. I had no idea where to go and didn't want to sleep in the city like most homeless do because I was too afraid of something happening to me or the few things I had while I sleep. So I went deep into the woods, opened the case with my clothes and curled up in there to sleep. Needless to say, I didn't sleep much that night. I was just disappointed in myself for being such a failure and cried a lot. Thank God I wasn't homeless long before my grandparents took me in until I found a job. 
When I had a job, my parents took me back in and I went to therapy. I'm good now, but getting abandoned by my parents when I needed them, the most still hurts to this day. Story 22. I was homeless about a year or two ago. God, it was bad. Although, the reason I left was because I was being abused by my father, so I guess you could say it was sort of better. As everyone says, the first night is bad, bad, bad. You come to the conclusion that this is really happening. There was actually a shelter that took me about five hours to walk to. I had no idea what huge difference a car would make. But I'm going to give advice. Do not bother going to a shelter. Maybe it was because I went from one lifestyle to another in a day. But the people there are rowdy, they smell, they steal your stuff, and fights have broken out more than one time. I only lasted three days before I left and decided to leave that. I found a secluded place in a parking lot that wasn't too bad to sleep in. And probably for the whole time, except for when I went long distances away from the area, I would sleep there. It was shaded from the sun, it didn't get too stuffy, it was spring to summer, and again, pretty hard to find. At least I've never seen anyone sleep there. I brought my phone with me when I left. And when I went to a Starbucks or a library or whatever else, I would get on Wi-Fi and watch YouTube or whatever else I was feeling at the time. That's actually how I found Reddit, and I lurked for a while before I ever started posting. I would visit libraries and search for jobs online. Thank God they let anyone use the computers. After I got a job, it took a few more months, but I rented a small apartment and then applied for school. I'm on scholarship right now, technically full ride if you count the three others. I've been living in the dorms, but I'm getting ready to move in with a friend. So what's being homeless like? It's so flipping hard. It makes you want to cry. I've had moments where I thought I would be better off dead since both lives, with family and homeless, were failing. I never want to go back to that time. I'm going to treat my rights so they never have to go through that or feel like they have to make that decision for themselves. I kind of went off on a tangent, so sorry if I ended up saying more than what the question asked. Story 24, edit. Thank you guys for the updates. Makes me feel a little better to hear that I'm not alone in this struggle. I sincerely hope that everyone is doing well, wherever you are. I wasn't homeless to the extreme that some other guys I got to know who camped in the woods outside of town were, but I did a spell at a mission in town for a summer. The first night was pretty rough. I had been living with some friends after losing my place, but life caused them all to go separate ways, so one drove me to the mission and pretty much was like k by. The mission was your typical ultra-conservative Christian ran shelter. The owners were hyper-aggressively masculine, to the point where they demanded your respect, even while driving around in their brand new sports cars and treating you like dirt. The guys living there were a mix of ex-cons and candy addicts, but there were also some older gentlemen who were there simply because they were old and the government assistance wasn't enough. You have to adopt new ways of thinking amidst the less reputable side of that crowd. Learn how to keep people from stealing your stuff. Learn how to talk to people who are jetty senseless so they don't start beef with you. I pretty much spent that summer walking around town from dawn to dusk looking for a job. Pretty sure I applied at literally every business I could, updated with them regularly. Did my best to avoid picking up any addictions. A year later, I'm sitting in a rented house with a lovely girlfriend and a cozy desk job. And I'd rather pass away than go back to that hell. Story 25. Slept in the back seat of my friend's broken down VW Beetle. Used the light from the streetlight to study and get my homework done on time. Later on, that same friend would sneak me into his dad's camper at night so I could actually lay out flat and get a good night's sleep. That worked for a while until I got caught and his dad kicked us both out. Went back to sleeping in the bug. Got by using old airline toiletries and washing up in the public restrooms by the beach and nearby Burger King. Still made the dean's list, though. Story 26. I'm not sure if this exactly counts as homeless, but it sure felt like it at the time. I'd lived with my partner in his house for two years and put up with domestic abuse pretty much from the beginning. I had two Ren from a previous relationship, so felt like I had to stay and I should be grateful. One day, it got far too much, and I felt that the could be in danger, aged seven and three at the time, so I literally packed one change of clothes, each a few pairs of underwear, and a pair of PJs each, and walked out the door I had less than 30 pounds on me, with the clothes on our backs, and that one bag was the scariest time of my life. I got on a train and went to my closest counsel office. We sat in that office for nearly 24 HRs before they found us a BAM PB to stay in for a couple of days. Was about four HRs away from the schools and my only support, my mom. I understand they did it to keep my ex from knowing where I was, but I've never felt so alone. We got moved from one BAM PB to the next for nine months. Them nine months were the hardest of my life. Before we finally got offered a flat to settle down in, I know a lot of people have had it worse, but I'll always feel guilty for putting my rent through that at such a young age. Edit. Thank you all so much for your kind words on a comment I thought would get lost. I'm overwhelmed with all the love and have shed a few tears tonight. It really does mean a lot to me. So thanks again, kind strangers. Exit. Story 27. 
I grew up in foster care and then when you become an adult, you age out, meaning you are no longer in the system. Some who age out are allowed to stay with their foster parents if they have a good relationship. I didn't have a good relationship with my foster parents. They had a mix of foster wren and their own bio wren living in the house and they basically just did it for the check. Anyway, I knew my birthday was approaching and that I'd have to leave and I was really nervous to talk to my foster mom about it. I did, and she was pretty dismissive of me, saying that there would TB room, but that maybe I could stay a few weeks after my birthday. A few days after my birthday, however, the caseworker shows up and I had to leave. I signed a bunch of paperwork and other stuff. They watched me as I packed my stuff. The poor part was that I didn't have much stuff because I shared a room. Plus, I had lived in multiple homes and never had more than one duffel bag. I asked to take a small blanket that I had had since I had been there, but my foster mom said no because it had been in their family for years. I got a little money from my caseworker, not a lot. Then she escorted me out Lamau like this bad person walked me out and down the block. My first night was actually okay. I slept in the park, but it was pretty cold at the time because it was in November. But I got used to it. Honestly, at the time I felt free. Like I had always lived with crappy people in crappy homes where I had no privacy or a billion chores to do or just getting yelled at. Out of the street, no one bothered me much unless I was begging money off people. Of course, in my homeless years, I didn't make the best decisions. Lots of guys used me or took advantage of me, and there were times when it was super rough and I didn't know I'd make it. But at least I was in charge of myself, if that makes sense. Also, and this is random, homeless people often get asked why we stay on the street and don't go stay at a shelter. FYI, they fill up fast and run out of room, and they can be dangerous. I've known a few people who have been assaulted there. I'm not saying all are bad, but in my experience, they are not a safe place. I have a home now, but sometimes I set newspapers on top of my sheets and sleep on them. I know how bizarre that sounds, but there were nights when I was out of the streets and had nothing but I would find a whole stack and be so happy and I'd wrap up in them and feel warm and safe. Story 28. I think people have this idea in their head that homeless means you're out on the street under a bridge or in a tent, but there are many facets of it. We were homeless for about 10 days after my mom left my dad. I was younger and it didn't click with me until I got older. Mom called me and my sisters and told us to pack up our stuff. We then just did what we needed to got those 10 days until she could secure some housing for us. I remember eating corn and rice for a meal, but that's the only real thing that sticks out to me from that time. Story 29. Honestly, it wasn't too bad for me. I got kicked out but lived in a good area. I had a car, so I just parked it in parks and stuff, and it was only about two weeks before I found a new place to stay. It was also just me at the time, so I really didn't mind too much. Not all cases are like this, though. It was temporary, and I was lucky enough to have a car a job where I could shower and spent most my days and nights at work. I worked at a kennel and theater, so I generally didn't get off until 2 and was at work by 6, so I wasn't in my car much anyways. It was also the early spring, so it wasn't too hot and wasn't too cold. I was lucky. Story 30. It didn't really occur to me that I was homeless for a couple weeks. I was 16, and my mom and I were in a domestic abuse situation. She fled to a friend's house, and I fled to my friend's house. And then from there, sofa surfed for a few weeks until my boyfriend's mom caught on that something wasn't quite right. I had spent random nights at their house prior in the spare room, but during that two weeks I had stayed three times with them, and at dinner she gently put down her fork and goes, Sarah, something is going on. Tell me about it. It wasn't a question. So I started bawling at the dinner table and realized I didn't have a home. And in the next five minutes, me, her, my boyfriend, and his dad all had our shoes on and in the car, on our way to my the abusive house to grab my things. Then they made the spare room my real room for a year before I could go to university and get an apartment. Story 31. The first time I had to live in a motel for half a year. Each night was the same as the last. Cramped, upsetting, but dry and safe. The second time, I got lucky and was already staying at my grandparents' house the night when I became homeless again. Thankfully, they allowed me to stay until I eventually got a new home. The first night, there was blissful peace and ignorance. Story 32. I was 17. I hit a car with my dad's Corvette. It wasn't that big of a deal. It was just a little damage to the front. Well, the guy I hit called my dad before I got home and told him a bunch of BS. Said his bumper fell off of his car and read my dad the riot act. When I got home, I walked through the front door. My dad hit me in the chest and knocked me back through the doorway. He screamed at me and told me to get out of his life. I went to the Redondo Beach Pier where I to the sky out and stared sleeping under the pier. The first night, and most nights after that, were a series of moments of having no idea what to do. I was lost. After seven months, I called my maternal grandparents and asked them for help. They moved me back to Arizona and got me into college. Edit, man, I haven't thought of that in years. A sudden wave of emotion just washed over me. I miss my grandma and grandpa. They were so good to me. Story 33. 
I lived in a minivan for half a year while I worked full-time at an airport. The trick was not to actually leave when the shift ended. Or if I left, I wouldn't go super far. I could afford to eat a couple times a day, and I had a cheap gym membership so that I could shower. The boredom was mind-numbing, but if it got too bad, I would just go back to the airport and people watch or pretend like I was about to fly somewhere. Never miss my family so much. Eventually gave up and moved back home. Story 34. I was 20 at the time, and it was the dead of winter. My first night was lots of why does no one care? Where will I sleep? How will I eat? Fudge, it's cold. Why me? Is this the end? The first night... I walked to each one of my friends' houses and eventually found one with their car unlocked. I slept in the back seat of their Honda and made sure to set an alarm on my watch to wake up before they left for work. It was shady, but to this day I'm grateful they left their car unlocked. A week or so later, I called family to see if I could spend Christmas with them. It was a resounding no from all parties. I cried a lot. It really broke me. That situation lasted for a little over a month. It pressured me to get clean off the sweets I was using. I was confident that I would pass away or commit if I had to live that way for any longer. Been clean seven years now. Being homeless humbled me. I'm no longer the arrogant, selfish, unpleasant person that put himself in that situation. Story 35. Well, for me, it wasn't due to economic reasons. I was in a new town for work and had my wallet, car keys, and phone in my jacket. Went to a library to loan some books as I had nothing else to do. Left the jacket unguarded for 10 minutes and someone stole it. Had no access to any money, couldn't call almost anyone except my family, and it was 7 p.m. already and getting dark outside. Borrowed a phone and called my girlfriend, then my parents, and asked them to contact the company I work for and let them know what had happened and how they could contact me the next day. So I spent two nights without a roof because it took that much time to sort things out, mostly because I couldn't really prove who I was. So I couldn't access the things they helped set me up with. It sucks beyond belief. You can't sleep because it's too flipping cold, and there aren't any places to go either because everything is closed. I remember when McDonald's closed at 10 p.m. the first night. Jesus Christ, that was not fun. But I wasn't very hungry as I had had dinner before I went to the library. The second day I was tired as I hadn't slept. I was so cold as well. I thought we will sort this through today easily, but boy was I wrong. It took until 2 p.m. to get in contact with the company, and they really tried to help me. They set up an emergency account at a well-trusted bank, called them in the town I was in, and said explicitly exactly what I looked like, what I was wearing, and that it was an emergency situation. Of course, the bank didn't trust them. So when I went there, they just said no. Being really hungry, I borrowed a phone again in the library called the company and said what had happened. So they mailed me a credit card to the library, talked with some staff at the library to lend me some cash so I could eat until the credit card arrived. So had one more night to spend outside and haven't slept the first night at all, I managed to slumber for 10. 30 minutes, woke up from the cold, had to start moving to build up some heat in my body. Slumber a little bit more. When McDonald's opened at 7 a.m., I went there, bought breakfast and coffee, and asked if I could sleep there for a while. After explaining my situation, they agreed. Slept until 10 a.m., went back to the library, and waited for the mail to arrive. Got the credit card and paid the person back with interest. I returned the double she had lent me. Because the gratitude you feel when they really flipping saved you from starving just a day is a very immense feeling. Use the credit card to rent a car. In the company's name, by having the place who rent out cars call the CEO of the company I work for so he would vouch for it. I drove home and started to get my life back on track. Driver's license, my own bank account, keys, phone, etc., etc., etc. We take these things for granted. Losing them all at the same time was hell. If you ever travel and get to a town, you don't know people be very careful about your things so it doesn't happen to you. The only thing I had was my clothes and shoes minus the jacket. But it did harden me. I'm more resilient now. So now I have lived out of a car for two weeks. For work because I couldn't find a cheap place to stay at. And I get 60% of the difference between what they have to pay for my residence in a new town and the actual cost of the residence I choose to stay at. Living out of a car is hard. There are so many things you take for granted that you lack running water, toilet, shower, and clean clothes. Just a place to eat that is your own place is something you will miss. If you plan on doing it, get a voltmeter, because I plugged my laptop into the car battery to charge it. Then I spent an evening watching YouTube videos and cow. The next day, the car was dead because I had drained the battery. Went to a gym for shower, but had to pay to use it well, obviously. Here in Sweden, we have no laundromats, so I had to use a dry cleaner to clean my clothes once. The worst part is that the chill really does creep into your car, so try to find a warm garage or a sleeping bag. You have access to none of the things you take for granted. Electricity becomes something you begin to think very carefully about. Always have two bottles of water, one for drinking the other for sanitation. Fill them up before you go back to the car for the night. 
Keep some toilet paper in the car at all times it has more uses than merely wiping your peach. Story 36. The first night it didn't sink in right away the situation I was in? Kind of in a days of get cow to a storage unit? What do I need? What do I throw out? About five days and it set in. I was never on directly on the streets, but I did some couch surfing stints and slept in my car. Having your own room and place to just zone out, be by yourself is a luxury I will never give up again. The real bad person of it all is the getting back to where you were before, but it also puts a lot of cow into perspective of wants versus needs. I was also between jobs, which is a whole other hurdle to jump over. Went from mildly inconvenienced to, oh cow, this is for real. It makes you grow up real quick if you want to get out of that situation. I slipped for a few months having pity parties. Luckily, one of my ex-buddies helped me by booting me out the door. Cow is awkward because I still feel like I owe him. And Cow got real between us while I was real deep down depressed. It's not easy pulling yourself out of that rut, but he gave me the kick and the peach I needed. And while we're not real close friends anymore, I don't resent what happened. And I still wish I could make up monetarily all the things he did for me, even though it was never expected. Luckily, I didn't have anyone besides me to worry about. I didn't want my family to know, but they've since pieced it together. I can't imagine how difficult it's got to be with a... I would never wish homelessness on my worst enemy. Story 37. I was 17. A week after I graduated high school, my adoptive mother kicked me out. She was intellectually and physically abusive that a massive opioid addiction didn't help. Well, all I had was a social security card and what I could carry. Couldn't get an ID until after she, thankfully, passed away. Because she knew ID find out I was adopted as soon as she gave me the BS birth certificate that was just a printout on a very old piece of paper that didn't even have a raised seal on it. No, I don't know how that even worked, but I imagine she was just too lazy to go get a new one after she got the one the state sent her after my adoption. Mind you, I was 19 when I was officially told despite constantly questioning why I look nothing like them. I was ecstatic to leave. Living on the streets, I had the best time of my life compared to the battlefield that was my adoptive mother. I've always had to survive in my own way, so surviving the streets took a lot of creativity I already had. I slept in a local park bathroom that oddly had heat and air. Not once did I beg for money on a corner or stay in a mission. To this day, I have hip and knee problems, thanks to going from locked in my room unless I was at school to walking hundreds of miles. Story 38. I've been homeless twice, but both times I managed to secure a temporary place to sleep after a couple of days. Those days, though, were among the worst I've ever experienced. It's just a sense of panic and feeling exposed and unsafe. And every time you go inside, you tell yourself to enjoy it for as long as they'll let you, because it's raining and windy outside, and you know you'll soon be back out in it. I have no doubt that if I had to do it for longer in either instance, I probably wouldn't have survived it, one way or the other. So I can't answer the adapting to it part, but thought I'd share what I do know anyway. Story 39. I walked for as long as I could and passed out on a bench in front of a church. So someone woke me up and asked if I was okay in the morning, and I explained the situation, and then they told me to leave since it was private property, and there would be people there soon, and they didn't want me making the place look bad. As soon as the words left his mouth, I realized that I was already viewed as less than human after one night. I ended up going to work still, as I never told them I was kicked out of my home and showering at the local community college, since they never checked to see if the people using the gym were students. Eventually, I got back on my feet, and even now that I'm not homeless, I still feel that way inside often, like I'm less than human. Story 40. It was quite brief. I lived with my grandmother until she passed away, just after I turned 18. The building society, like a bank, had refused to let me have anything to do with her house and opted to evict me. So I did. The last week was madness trying to get all my stuff out. I gave loads away to different people. I had a tiny flat lined up, but that was taking longer than expected, and the eviction date loomed. The bailiffs wouldn't extend further. So they came, took my keys, and that was it. I was homeless, albeit briefly, but I had a set of spare keys. So I just let myself in and slept in a sleeping bag on the floor, with our dog until the flat was ready, with everything I could squeeze into my car in there. The rest of my stuff was tipped, but that's life sometimes. I did go through a period of being of no fixed abode for a while a year or so later, as I screwed up on the flat and had no idea how to manage my money properly. Eventually got that sorted too, but it's a rubbish lifestyle. Story 41. My first day of being homeless, I had to bring my son and parents to the airport. I had to make sure my son would be well, so I decided to let him live with my parents, who came to pick him up. It was awful, but I also timed it so I wouldn't feel the awfulness of being split from my son. I went surfing the same day and stayed out of town with a friend. After the short surf trip, I was truly homeless, and temporarily less. I messaged a friend to let me stay the night. The first of many nights, I also arranged to stay with another friend and her family. It was July. I only had summer clothes. 
I needed to be able to get my cow together before it got colder. So maybe I wasn't out on the streets, but I still had no permanent home. It wasn't as bad as the others posted on here. Story 42. I grew up busking and begging because my joy parents couldn't remember to take care of me. I knew most of the homeless in my area because of that. So when I ran away, I knew things like who to talk to and where to bunker down. It was quiet compared to the constant outbursts of crazy and violence with my parents. I felt safer because most of the more respected homeless people had known me close to a decade and made everyone leave me alone. Story 43. My story isn't as rough as some others. I guess I just saw unavoidable homelessness coming about 12 months in advance and I was able to prepare for it. I basically used all my savings to buy a van and kit it out with the basics. Fridge, toilet, etc. It wasn't anything fancy. And by spending that money, I definitely shortened the amount of time I could rent for. But it's been a lot better than just sleeping on the street. The first night after my lease ended, and my only home was my van, I went to a spot I'd already cased out. I wanted to be somewhere nice on the first night, just so I might feel like things would be alright. And it was a really great night. It was just me on the beach, no one around for miles. There were so many stars. I woke up just in time to see the sunrise over the ocean. A wild rooster woke me up. And I even found an abandoned camp chair on the beach to sit in. I did really feel like things would be alright then. And the homelessness thing has been good for me. I just feel calmer. Maybe because I'm outside almost all the time. Maybe because I read and write and draw more. Though obviously my experience is a bit better, because I have a vehicle and I'd prepared. 